I've been dreaming on in my head like I've seen it A life worth living is a life with meaning I'll do what I love till my heart stops beating I'm feeding this demon Got a taste, can't erase bitterness in my face Work a job every day till your dreams fade away Like a card never change, play the game Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here Thank you very much for joining me I want to give a shout out to Linda who recently bought me five cups of coffee. Thank you so very much. God bless you. You are one of God's angels. Thank you. Imagine a world where summer vanishes, the skies darken, and crops wither away in months. This isn't science fiction. It's the terrifying potential of Mount Tambora, a volcano in Indonesia that could unleash a super eruption capable of changing life as we know it. Scientists warn that an event like this could plunge Earth into a chilling crisis. And today I'm diving into why Mount Tambora could kill summer forever. Mount Tambora isn't just any volcano. In 1815, it erupted with a force 100 times stronger than Mount St. Helens. On April 10th of that year, 1815, there was a sound of cannon fire, or so they thought. Um, British and Dutch forces thought maybe that someone was up to something they shouldn't be doing and sent soldiers out to investigate. But it was the prelude to an eruption of Mount Tombora in Indonesia's lesser Sunda Islands. To say this was a huge eruption is a understatement. It was the biggest volcanic eruption in at least 10,000 years. People talk of the neighboring Krakatoa eruption in 1883 as a big deal. Well, it was, but it was a baby compared to Mount Tabora. Krakatoa happened at a time when telegraphs carried news around the world in a blink of an eye. But Tambora was the real news story at a time when technology simply was not equipped to disseminate information fast enough. Mount Tambora went off with the equivalent of 33 billion tons of TNT, 2.2 million times the Little Boy atomic bomb dropped on Hiroshima, a plume of smoke and ash which reached 40 kilometers or about 25 miles into the air. It caused widespread death and destruction. An estimated 10,000 people died instantly in the blast near the island and on the neighboring island of Lombok. The blast caused a tsunami, which rolled across the Java Sea at a height around uh, 2 meters, 6 feet, and ash fell on the islands as far as 1,300 kilometers away, or 810 miles away. Insignificant quantity, enough so that it would collapse roofs 400 kilometers away from the weight, which would be about 250 miles. Acid rain fell on the region. Water supplies were left undrinkable. Forests, grasslands, and crops were decimated. And perhaps as many as 80,000 locals would die of famine in the wake of the eruption. Tambora threw a lot of ash into the atmosphere, but also released massive amounts of sulfur, chlorine, and fluoride also. This led to the 1816 to become the year without summer, and it drastically affected the whole planet. The ash blocked out sunlight, dropped global temperatures by 3 degrees Celsius. Snow fell in June. Crops failed across Europe and North America, and the famine spread. Fast forward to today, and Tempora is still active, quietly rumbling in Indonesia. Geologists warn that a similar eruption could happen again. If it does, the consequences would be dire. Billions of tons of ash and sulfur dioxide would form a veil in the stratosphere, reflecting sunlight and cooling the planet for years. Summer? Well, it would vanish, replaced by freezing temperatures. Crops like wheat, rice, and corn could fail within months leading to food shortages worldwide. Modern supply chains, already fragile, 
could collapse under the strain. So why should we care? A temporal scale eruption could disrupt our interconnected world in ways we're not prepared for. Food insecurity, economic turmoil, and mass migration could follow. Scientists are monitoring Tambora and other supervolcanoes closely. They're also watching in Italy Mount Vesuvius, Yellowstone supervolcano there in Wyoming here in the United States. Though they be watching them very closely, predicting eruptions is tough. While we can't stop nature, we can prepare. Stockpiling food, diversifying crops, and researching climate resistance are key. In 1991, the eruption of Mount Punitubo in the Philippines released 15 million tons of sulfur dioxide, causing a significant global temperature drop of just 0.5 Celsius. Despite the scale of the Pinatubo eruption, it was not classified as a super eruption. Scientists like Alan Robach of Rutgers University emphasize that aerosols from such eruptions can remain suspended for years consequently reflecting sunlight as the planet is already grappling with the challenges of the changes of our planet a super eruption could exaggerate existing environmental threats the potential for a significant cooling effect coupled with the unpredictability of volcanic activity makes preparation and monitoring critical Besides cooling the planet, it could disrupt weather patterns, notably affecting rainfall. This could severely impact regions dependent on monsoon rains like Asia and Africa, leading to failed harvests and widespread food shortages. The resulting scarcity could heighten geopolitical tensions, increasing the risk of conflict over resources. Well, they're already fighting over resources globally, aren't we? Today, if such an eruption happened again, the world is far more interconnected and populated, amplifying the risk of similar event. Urbanization and globalization means that the effect of a super eruption would be felt across borders, affecting supply chains and international relations. As scientists continue to explore the complex dynamics of super eruptions, the question remains, how can humanity effectively safeguard itself against such unpredictable natural events? Countries no longer stockpile food for emergencies like they did years ago. Many of the older generation may remember the uh, cheese and butter giveaways here in the United States from the stockpiles as they age. Uh, yeah, they don't do that anymore. We don't stockpile for emergencies. This volcano and other volcanoes just reminds us of how fragile our planet can be. A single eruption could plunge us into a world without summer where crops die and survival hangs in the balance. Yeah, are you prepared? Do you think about different types of disasters? Many people do stock up on food, water, clothing, medical supplies. Um, myself, I do it just because, well, it's a, it's a fight against inflation. It's a fight against possible shortages in the future. So what are your thoughts? Share your thoughts down below. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.